All right, hello fishing fans, Ken Smith, KenSmithFishing.com. This is the first in a series of breaking down Rayburn, uh, kind of like we did with our map tip back in 2014. Now, I posted a video a week ago. I'm going to put these in a series, but the first video is sort of the lake overview, how to get around the different roads, places to stay, places to launch, get fuel, eat, stuff like that. So now we're going to break down the lake with a much better camera so that you can actually see the details on the map. And I'm going to add to this this year uh, as we do these updates, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the historical fishing on the lake. Kind of where the grass shows up, watercolor and stuff like that in addition to the navigational tips. So for those of you coming in for the first time or those of you who've been on the lake and you know like I do, I tend to fish kind of the same small area of the 114,000 acres it is Sam Rayburn over and over. So we we'll kind of try to expand our minds a little bit and learn some stuff about different parts of the lake. Now by the way, so I got a lot of questions in the past about 147 and above and what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out a way to load a, um, a, um, a trail is what we're going to do. So I think I've figured out a way what we're going to do is we're going to load a trail from the 147 bridge up to the 103 bridge up the Angelina arm. I'll give you another trail from 147 bridge to above the power lines up to about the Townsend boat ramp uh, going up the Atoyuk arm. Uh, I think the rest of it you can kind of figure out because uh, I don't want to, I, I, you know, there's a lot of data on those trails. So the stuff that I feel like I can run pretty comfortably, I'll just point it out to you on the map. So that's going to come. Those trails will come when we get to that part of the lake. I'm going to try to get a couple of these up every week so you can kind of go through all your data. Interestingly, I have a new boat and I had to go back in and download some of my waypoints from my original map tips because I didn't have all my waypoints go from unit to unit when I sold my boat. So let's jump in. Let's start out as we always have on the south end. Let's talk about what's down there and uh, then we'll just work our way up uh, both arms of the lake. Here we go. Alright, so let's jump in down here on the south end of Rayburn. So we have our dam right here, okay? And as we've talked about, so 255 is the road that comes uh, off of 63. So if you're coming in from either Jasper or coming in from the north end of the lake, you're going to come down. There's a flashing red light down here. Excuse me, a flashing red stop sign. You come across to 255. That's about five miles. And there's two ramps down here, so let's talk about those two ramps. All right, so this is going to be for those of you who are fishing out of, most likely if you're fishing a tournament, you're going to be fishing out of Umfries Pavilion, okay? And Umfries is going to be right there. There are two boat ramps here. Right there in the Umfries Pavilion pocket, if you will, is uh, a nice four-lane wide boat ramp with parking for probably 50 to 100 boats, but you'll see people parked all the way up onto 255. There's also overflow when it's open that you can park over in the Umfries Pavilion parking lot as well. I'll tell you, just a little tip for you, most of the tournaments that go out of Umfries, um, when, they, when they send you out, they send you off that dock, so a lot of times it's just as easy to pull around here and park in the Umfries parking lot and just pick, uh, meet, your, meet your boater or your partner, whoever's driving the boat, on that dock. Just walk down there and get in the boat with them. So uh, that's a ramp. The second ramp that you can use, and it, it's a ramp that a lot of the locals use, uh, other than when it's real windy, is on the point out here. Okay, So if you come down 255, there's three or four turn-ins. There's one into a neighborhood. The one you're going to be looking for is the one with the ranger station. So it's the, it's the turn-in closest to the dam away from the uh, public boat ramp. By the way, the public boat ramp, I believe it's a $3 launch fee to launch there, and it's an honor system, but uh, you know, hey, please pay your three bucks so we keep the really, really nice uh, ramps that we have down here. So you can go out here. There's a ramp that faces this way, and there's a ramp that faces the point. This one's two or three wide. This one's four wide, but right now in July of 18, one of those ramps is closed. I think they've got some problems with the concrete. So you can launch at either one of those ramps. If you then, or if you launch at one of these public ramps, if the water is at pool, you can just run right straight around here and run in. If the water gets below pool, this gets pretty shallow through here, so it's best to run out and all the way around. And what I'll tell you is just run wider than what you think. This is all open water, except that little clay point right there sticks way, way out there. 
So you really want to be careful running around that clay point. Okay. This area here is what's known as the Old Twin Dikes. So it's now, I think, called Rayburn Marina or something like that. Uh, there's some, uh, I, I talked about it in our last video, there's some nice um, cabins for rent back here. There's also on, in the uh, state park right here where we put in at, uh, there are some, uh, there's nice campsites, there's really nice bathrooms, and there's also some primitive camping sites there. And, and what that is, is it's a building, I think with electricity, but no running water, you have to go to the bathroom, and no air conditioning and heating, so uh, some camping available there. Running around down here, this is all pretty safe, except for these shallow points, especially so the lake level. Uh, normal pool on Rayburn is 164.4. To see what the lake level is, you just go to USGS Water Data, and you look under the Neches, N-E-C-H-E-S, River Basin, and that will tell you, uh, you can see what the lake level is, you can look at the history of the lake level, see whether it's coming up or going down, which of course is going to impact your fishing. Uh, in the area, by the way, uh, the back of that pocket right there where everybody puts in was historically some of the best sight fishing on the lake if you're down here sight fishing. But if you're fishing a tournament, it's probably going to be off limits. A lot, a lot, a lot of release fish get caught off the dam. A lot of release fish get caught off some of these points all the way around in the twin dikes. There has been grass down here in the past. And when I say grass at Raven, I'm talking about hydrilla. Uh, there's, I've not seen any hydrilla down there this year, although we have seen hydrilla on the south end of the lake that we haven't seen for a really long time. Okay, As you work your way up the lake, uh, this big creek right here is Tiger Creek. There's some really nice new houses in there. Let me back it out just a smidge. So that's Tiger Creek. You can run all of this all the way into Tiger Creek. This is all open. Those of you who come in from Rocky Lakes and want to fish Rocky Points, uh, the end of this island's all rocks, and around those two little islands are all rocks, and those two both do hold some fish. I've never heard of any really big fish coming off of them, but I'm sure some of them have. You can then come out of here and work your way on up, and what you're doing is you're going up into what I call the Easley Flats area, which is that arm right there. Okay, that's the Easley Flats area. Um, you're actually pretty safe until you get right down here and you see this, this red area that's known as Solly's Woods, S-O-L-L-E-Y. And I'll tell you, 20 years ago, I probably fished in Solly's Woods as much as anywhere on the lake. And I probably haven't made a cast in there in five years. I suspect those fish are still there. I just don't get down there very much. Uh, you keep working your way up and this is Mill Creek. Make sure I'm in the right spot there. Yeah, so there's Mill Creek. Let me zoom in just a smidge for you. Mill Creek also has a very nice boat ramp in the back of it. I learned my lesson running in the fog one day. Quick funny story before GPS. I left Mill Creek in the fog and thought, I'm just going to run right over here to need more point and I'm on a fish. And I took off and I ran and I ran and I ran and I ran. And I thought, doggone it, I missed it. I must have gotten over here. And I got to where I thought was over here because I pulled up on some buoys. And I had actually, because there's buoys in the mouth of Powell Park, I had run out there and made a giant circle and driven right back to where I started in Mill Creek. Thank goodness for uh, driving slow and being careful, but being lost. All right, so Mill Creek, again, another area that there has historically been some grass in. There's not right now. I also mentioned in my last message, or in my last video, there is a big KOA campground not far from there with uh, 27, I believe, uh, cabins for rent. Uh, I don't know. I suspect when they say cabins, those are probably house trailers, but I do, that, I do know they have a Facebook page. You can go check that out. Uh, I talked also Bass Buster, Rayburn Country. Rayburn Country is right over here. Nice hotel, um, and then there's some houses for rent in the area. I would check with uh, some, some locals to see if they know of any houses for rent. All right, all the way up here. So this is what I refer to as the Easley Flats. Uh, I cautioned you in the last video about the roadbed. I'll give you that data in a minute. But to a large degree, this is all pretty open, okay? From Mill Creek, if you come out of Mill Creek, you can take a right, and you're basically safe until you get to that roadbed. That roadbed at pool probably is completely safe. I'm going to guess that roadbed is probably top of its 158, 159, and that's a guess. If somebody actually knows that, Enter the, the, the actual depth of the roadbed in the comments below. 
but I believe you're safe running over that road bed at pool at 164. Let me get you some waypoints. Hold on one second. Okay, so I'm going to give you, there are several creeks that go through that road bed. The one that runs through it down there at the bottom, I don't think this map is exactly correct. Sorry, it's drifting on me just a smidge. But the road bed, excuse me, the creek that goes through the road bed right down here, the, the coordinates on that blowout are north 3109.640 by west 093, 59.573. Okay, so if you get around that, you can idle through there. Be careful idling around back there. This is all really shallow water back here. There's a couple of nice creeks that run through there. I'll tell you, several years ago, there was good grass in here and there was some decent um, swim jig fishing and there's also are times when this gets real padded up there's a lot of lily pads down back there I haven't been in there this year I don't know if those are in there sorry I may have been pointing off the map but all in behind that road bed it, it's it's relatively protected because the north wind really can't get to it too bad that water I've never seen it get real gin clear it's usually a little bit of dirty watercolor I would say see a spinnerbait in anywhere from six inches to two feet deep that gives you a sense of how clear that water will get back there many many years ago this was a giant grass flat it was some of the best flipping fish of, on the lake I've again not seen the grass really show up back there in a long time I'm gonna give you one other blowout up here so that you can line those two up to get a sense where the roadbed runs and by the way you can see the roadbed running out of either end but the um, the other blowout is going to be North 31, 10.298 by West 093, 59480. So by the way, Rayburn, again, 164.4, I'm pointing at something you can't see, is pool. But the lake, if you look up the lake on, online, they'll tell you the lake fluctuates on average 7 feet per year. We've seen fluctuations uh, way in excess of 7 feet a year both directions. Uh, I've seen it way down in the 150s and way up in the 170s, so the lake can really, really vary. You see a line I drew here when we did our map just before? That's a pretty hard timber line. So there are two, what I would call, really beautiful creeks back here. Bear Creek and Pompano Creek. And actually, there's a spot in here. Those two creeks run within two or three, ten feet of each other, let's say. They get really close together. It is all timber. There's some beautiful, great big timber back there when the water gets low and you can see it to flip. I have seen grass up to the edge of the creeks back there. Again, years ago, and I'm going to say probably 20 years ago, we had a December where we absolutely whacked them back there. Hadn't been in there in a long time, but it looked great. I also have a buddy who basically took and tracked, I believe it was Bear, but it may have been Pompano Creek and just went back and forth across it back before we had the maps we have today and marked every single creek swing went back and said he had three creek swings out there where he could catch a fish literally every cast so they were all just two pounders but it was spectacular fishing there is a big population of fish back here there are also back down here kind of more main lakey and this is not a good map but there's some really good deep points and drop offs out here there's some good fishing out there as well think that'll give you a sense of the easily flats on we'll take a break uh, I think I've given you all the ramps there are in there I think it's just the public ramp the old twin dikes ramp or the state park ramp and Mill Creek I don't think there's any of them other in there if you want to go up to the Mill Creek ramp and we'll back up just a smidge you would come back out to 255 you would take a left up to 1007 to 96 and drive up and you'll see the turn in to get into Mill Creek up there uh, that is a state park ramp. It's a nice, well-maintained ramp. There's also a state park campground right there that is well-maintained. Uh, that's a three-wide boat ramp. I believe there's a dock there as well. Even if there's not, uh, all three of, actually two of those three ramps if you're by yourself. The public ramp in Mill Creek would be really easy to get in by yourself. Uh, the old Twin Dikes or state park ramp out there is a little more difficult, or, or is very difficult. There's no place to beach your boat. So if you're by yourself, go here or go up to Mill Creek. All right, let's take a break. That'll be map number one on Rayburn. And when we get back, we'll talk about going up the Buck Bay Arm.